welcome back. We are going to be finishing up our landscape. Um, <laughs> I added a couple random things to mine just to make it a little more fun. When I was looking at this mountain, it looked like a volcano to me, so I added some fire shooting at the top, and then that made me want to add a couple of dinos to my picture. But I loved seeing all the cool things you guys drew on yours, and I thought we'd do something a little different for coloring it in today. So, I've got some color pencils with me. I just sharpened them all to make them nice and ready. And um, we're going to do something kind of cool. Since we were talking about lines this whole project, I thought this could be a super fun thing to use some of our lines um, when we're adding color and value to it. And instead of just coloring it like we do every single time you color anything and that gets kind of old, I thought it'd be neat if we kind of filled this in with different colored patterns, okay? So what I mean by that is each one of these little shapes that we drew is a different thing. So I'm going to pick some colors and I want to fill in my shapes with some lines that kind of do different things, different patterns, different designs, different stuff like that. So maybe if I want this dino to be, let's say I want him to be um, an orange dinosaur, what I'm going to do is instead of just coloring him in, I want to fill him in by just kind of taking my pencil and making some long, continuous, single lines. I have not picked up my pencil once. This is one long line. Okay. I'm going and I'm going and I'm filling it in. And I want to kind of fill the whole space with one, this one is squiggly, which I thought would be fun, with one long squiggly line. It'll be a challenge to see if you can make this all one line without ever picking up your pencil. It'll especially be a challenge if your pencil gets flat or if it breaks or something like that. And if that ever happens, you can just stop See how my line stops right there? And then I could sharpen my pencil and then go back to that same little stopping point and keep it going. That's okay, I'm fine with that. But if possible, I wanna see if you can fill in your whole shape with just one continuous wiggly line. So I chose to make him kind of a wiggly squiggly line. That'll make him have some cool little patterns and look like scales almost. And I'm filling in his whole body with one color and one line, okay? So, I've got that done so far. I could have put a little more there, I guess, but he's fine. Now for his little underbelly, I wanna do a different color, but I want it to be kind of related. So I'll do a red, because red and orange are related. They're like little brother and sister almost. And maybe I'll do his belly with the red. And I wanna do that same kind of wiggly squiggly line, but I've changed colors now. I could do this section red. I could do this section red. I guess I should have done his back legs in that orange as well. Then I could pick a totally different color. Maybe I'll get purple to do the little spikes on his back. And I'm just going to, if you look really closely I'm just filling it in with little squirrelies. Now you do want to stay in your lines, you do want to keep it neat. Whoop. You want um, your pencil lines to be nice and dark so you don't go over them because I still want to tell what your drawing is but these little colors will help pop. Maybe I'll give him purple toenails too. Maybe his sister painted his toenails this morning. <laughs> That's cool. All right, and you could always go in and kind of darken some of your outlines just so it stays nice and neat. But since I've colored that all in one long continuous line, I think it looks pretty interesting. Um, I'm gonna keep going with different kinds of lines though. Maybe my tree here, maybe instead of doing the squiggle line, maybe I'll do my tree with a little leafy line over and over like this but I still want to keep it one long, continuous line. This one's almost like a little leafy, bumpy, wavy fill-in. Okay, I'll do the next little part of the tree. I could do a lighter green if I wanted to, just to mix it up a little bit. Oh, 
And if you mess up and kind of have to go back over a spot you already did, that's fine. That looks pretty cool. Maybe for my tree trunk, I'm going to fill it in with long, separated, wavy lines to make it look like bark. So I'm going up and then down and then up and then down. And that'll give it that kind of barky look. That looks cool. Okay. Maybe for my water, I'm going to get the blue. And I'm going to fill it in with zigzags just to make it a little different. You know what? I already separated this, so I'm going to keep each little section a little different. So I'll zigzag up. Kind of going back and forth with my zigzags. Now I'm going to speed this up so I can show you the next part. But then maybe when I do my next one over, I'll pick a different color. And I could do a different color with that same pattern, or I could change up my pattern. Maybe this one has little wavies going back and forth with the purple. And I would go all the way up. Maybe this next one, I'll go back to the blue, and this one has little spirals but I'm not lifting my pencil I'm trying to keep it all one long continuous line of weird patterns I'm gonna speed up my video and just fly through this real quick so you can see kind of how cool this can look when it's done so let's just hang tight a second maybe I'll put on some music I kind of flew through it I might have kind of cheated in a couple places like where I skipped over him but sometimes if you are trying to you know go for a certain look you have to alter it a little bit on some of my little trees I just cut on um, and the tiny little parts I just kind of colored it in a little more than I would have because it's it's really hard to do tiny little patterns on stuff like that and here I, I'm outlining some of my pencil lines to make them pop a little more but you can see this looks really cool it's a really interesting way to fill in some color instead of just doing the classic old shading in and then once you've done that if you wanted to you could do some of that fadey that uh fading from shading in and out on the edges and that would make this even have a cooler look to it if i wanted to i could start dark and kind of fade over to nothing on some of these edges i could um do that in the water in some places but there's a lot you can do that's really going to bring this picture out and make it look really interesting so i cannot wait to see what you do with your picture um, i want to see some nice shading and coloring to make this a finished out thing if you want to do it in a couple stages um, i understand because it can take a while to add some color and i know your time each day is kind of limited so 
um, whenever you find free art time if you want to work on this that's always great but I can go in and add some extra shading and value and blending on top of the cool little patterns I did and that'll make it look even neater you can really take your time and make this an awesome thing so I can't wait to see what you guys come up with I can't wait to see uh, what you post on Google Classroom when you finish make sure you do that I still have a lot of kids who aren't um, always posting everything they make and I'm always excited to see your work so if you ever finish artwork make sure you're posting it on Google Classroom so that Mr. Galloway knows how great of a job you did that's pretty, pretty cool I'm actually shading these mountains just on one side to give them kind of a cool little 3D look that's kind of neat. anyway can't wait to see what you did let us see how it goes hope you had fun and let's go with some lines oh I forgot whenever you draw one continuous line and you try to fill it in and you don't let that line break or stop that's called a contour line that's the fancy art word for it so we just did kind of some contour art on this picture all right see you next week guys Boom.